Hi everyone, next on the cards is a lovely Dartington Crystal beer tankard and on this we are going to be engraving, we, I am going to be engraving the top of a dolphin coming out of the water. Um, a tricky little one, so you've got the movement, the swirl of the water and then just the, the top half of the dolphin peeping out and, and talking talking to you. It should be great fun, right slap bang in the middle of the front, um, the front of this tankard, what we would call the front. Sometimes people like to put it on the other side so if you're right-handed the person watching you can see the engraving but most people want it to be facing you. So if you're left-handed or it's going to someone who is left-handed then you obviously put it, um, if they want it facing them, then you put it on that side. So these are little things that you need to work out before you get on and do a tankard. So I will be measuring, finding the center point of the front. And then interestingly, the center point is going to be about there, okay, using my circles um, and, and lining up with the handle, obviously. And then I'm going to be moving my line slightly away from the handle and I normally do that by about half a centimeter and this is because the handle is quite thick and when you when you mark the middle it just gives the impression that it's not quite center it this is something that I do I don't know if anyone else in the world does it but I don't like looking at it and and thinking that it's slightly nearer the handle than it should be so I move it slightly sideways. Anyway uh, that's pretty easy and it's going to be approximately that sort of size so not enormous or anything like that just that sort of size. This customer has given me three glasses to do they are all different and I'll probably be filming them all um, the other one will be a whippet, um, a whippet on a wine glass and a flamingo on a gin glass. And the flamingo is a funny one because they want the flamingo stretching down its neck to the water, the gin. <laughs> I love my customers. They come up with the most bizarre things. Anyway, so right, let's get on with this. See you later. Okay, so you can see I have created the center point and then moved slightly sideways away from the handle and called that the center because visually it looks more like the center because of the thickness of the handle and it's just something that I do as I explained earlier. So the image ugh, doesn't really have a solid center does it but um, roughly the center of the scene um, and drawn out very simply basic outlines just positioning where everything is and using a little wide arkansas i'm going over the edges so i'm just preparing the basic shape so that i can remove the white material from behind it and um, then we'll be able to see the engraving better where at the moment, obviously, I've got the white material behind it so that we can see the black marker. It's just a, a permanent felt tip, which of course will wash off. He looks like he's got a rubber ring around him at the moment, but these, these lines are very basic, obviously. <laughs> I have a large abrasive rubber you can see the sparkle in it and this on its own on the glass will produce a hue 
So there's something there and quite often I will use it for water. So here I have my little experimental piece. An essential bit of <laughs> equipment just so that you can play and, and test your ideas and test your burrs before you put it onto the, the actual artwork. There are ov obviously and always so many different ways of tackling uh, a subject and basically I, I play it by ear. I never know what I'm going to do first really and I just play it by ear. There are no hard and fast rules. You make it up. As long as you end up with a nice enough picture. Now you can see I have run this flowing line of water straight across the animal because I don't want to have it jerking. I want that to look continuous. And of course, by the time we even engraved the dolphin's head, that will completely obliterate the little mark that I've made across his face. So now you can see it quite clearly. Very simple. There's not a lot showing underneath the water, but you can see parts of the fins underneath the water. And there will be just the slightest hint of the body underneath the water. I think tapping the glass with my finger helps me think, <laughs> obviously. Right, I'm showing you the very unusual markings on the water. Quite frankly, you don't have to copy exactly what you see in the picture as long as it looks roughly like water. But I was quite intrigued with these sort of almost rough texture, but without being rough sparkly. It, it was a weird, weird texture on the water just where this dolphin was swirling, obviously, with his fins. So I'm, I'm just starting using that rubber. You can see it's, it really does make quite a significant mark on the, water, on, the, on the water, on the glass, even though all it is is a rubber. can be used quite successfully with um, the sky and clouds and things like that where you just want a suggestion in the background even mountains and, and trees if you like it just there's something there without it being diamond work which would be you know really too harsh sometimes have a large burr, uh, a large diamond burr, and I'm going to 
use this for sparkle. No, I've decided to change my mind. Now this is something I would normally edit out, or sometimes I would edit it out, but quite frankly, it's, it's nice. I've gone back to the original one. It's nice for you to see how I change my mind all the time. Nothing is set in stone. I, I play around. Um, I wanted to bounce this glass, uh, you know, bounce the burr over the glass at very slow speed. Um, and I'm showing you here how I am barely holding the end of it and I am letting it bounce at slow speed. But quite frankly, this burr uh, is quite old. And so not as sharp as it should be. I don't think I'm particularly happy with the effect of it, but it's a good demonstration of how I'm holding it. You will see now I have picked up yet another burr. It's not quite the shape that I wanted. I wanted that a flame shape, but it's, it's still going to produce a nice white sparkle. It's a sort of a stipply effect. Again, just holding the end and loosely in your hand and letting it bounce on the glass. Very slow speed. And now going over where I see there are more brilliant sparkles on the water. You can, if you are into stippling by hand, you can sit with a diamond point and tap, tap, tap on the glass. But I find, well, you know me, I like to do things quite quickly. And um, this for me is by far the most efficient method of stippling. Certainly something just like water. using water because as you would have noticed previously we were working dry with the stipple effect now I've got the water dripping and a nice sharp average size diamond burr and I am starting to get stuck into the actual dolphin now I don't want this line to be deep and, and, and on its own like an outline but I did want it to be relatively deep, but blended into the rest of the animal. Always keep in mind that even though it may not be intaglio engraving, as in really deep engraving, um, the little bit of depth that we have put into it will be picked up at some point by the light, the angles of the light. So you will be able to see if I have done 
a really sharp outline and that would just completely flatten the image. Whereas if you blend it into the rest of the body, it looks like a solid body and a good shape. I'm also trying not to create texture in a sort of a rough sort of way. I am filling in the details without leaving too many lines, if you know what I mean. You don't want to be able to see that it it looks rough or lumpy or streaky. This can be smoothed out a little bit more later on with um, other, a larger diamond in the larger areas. Obviously not going too close to the edges, otherwise... You could sneak over the edge. Uh, some people use a rough green stone to smooth it out a bit. So where I had black lines breaking up the shape of the animal as in there's sort of different tones um, I am creating the engraving leaving very fine line of clear glass in between and I will be able to see very clearly where those shape definitions are of movement on the tummy, slight ripples, and I am managing to create that with a little bit of depth variation with this diamond. It won't be significant, but it will be just there. video as usual I have sped up to 120% of actual normal speed. Always be very very careful of mouths, beaks, anything like that. It really is vital that they are exactly the right shape the right size because if you make them ever so slightly out of the line it's just impossible to to get them back unless you've got some really big polishing wheels um, to get them back into the right shape is just impossible to be extremely careful Now, quite frankly, I could have used a larger diamond for this whole tummy area.
constantly feel uh, with my thumb I'm not necessarily just wiping away the excess dust which is obviously very wet dust but I'm also feeling the surface I'm feeling for lumps that maybe I can't see you can very easily feel how smooth your engraving is Again, very, very carefully leaving a tiny little line of clear glass. You can barely see it, in fact, where the line of the mouth is. Oh, I'm slightly deeper in, in the front. I've got a very small diamond burr in the drill right now, and I am carefully just sharpening the edge, neatening the edge of the mouth. So using a white Arkansas in the middle of the eyeball, as usual, not going too, too deep, but slightly deeper. And this takes away the surface, giving it a little eyeball shape. I'm referring to the image all the time, of course. Image that I'm, I'm using. There I have taken that white Arkansas very successfully up the, the line uh, that was a very fine uh, join between the top of the head and the, and the bottom of the mouth. I also find when you are fixing an edge, making sure that it is really perfect, that working dry with a, with a good little diamond is quite on, honestly often a, a better way of doing it. So using a, a brown rubber, I am just polishing out the shape of the eye and going over that, that mouth area. <laughs> little little diamond these diamonds are exactly the same as what your dentist uses in your mouth uh, as if you didn't know clearly creating the shape around the eyeball giving it some eyelids if they have eyelids of some description and um, and there's a little sort of line underneath the eye as well Right here I have my soft grey rubber, or you can try any, any rubber, 
if you have something that feels slightly softer. Even, even the one that I used for the water, quite frankly, would have been fine. A lot of you have those, the big, the big uh, abrasive rubbers. And then just the, the back of the dolphin is quite dark, but you don't want to create a, a very, very black see-through dolphin. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see it on the glass. just adding streaks of, of shading where I see them on the photograph. instantly just a little bit of shading underneath the mouth just lifts its head and makes it look really real just in a fraction of a second just by adding shading is a funny bit of shading but I promise you it's what's on the picture <laughs> just looking at it on the screen it looks like it's wearing a bikini so here I have uh, my large ish large ish diamond again and adding this fin Again, like the mouth, there is a distinct line of color. So I have just left the tiny, tiny gap of clear glass for the moment. Now, just getting away from the dolphin for a bit, I've popped down to the water with a white Arkansas. And that is to add in the bottom of the other fin. A nice little half tone burr, uh, the white Arkansas. For this sort of thing, it's perfect. Just a hint of the underwater bit of body. So here is the, the slightest hint of this dolphin's tummy underneath the water. It really wasn't showing up that much at all in the image. I think in fact um, I could have made it a little bit more noticeable using a bit of artistic license just to show some more body underneath the water.
So here I have a, a rubber disc. It's a, quite a hard rubber. And it also makes a, a hue on the glass when used by itself. I don't think I did much with it there. No, I didn't. Back with the small rubber, I was just defining a shadow at the bottom of this fin. And of course then taking the white arkansas just to add a bit of water above the fin. That's quite effective. up with a, a small diamond on the edges certainly not going deep just 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 neating neatening any edges that look like they are slightly rough and defining that bit of top lip they have such a cute smiley face don't they You can see I have signed it. it. Was possibly one of the very last 2001 engravings. Yes, you will notice I have uh, drawn with a pen a very straight line just to show a little bit more definition on the horizon, a true horizon, not just a made up wobbly one. And using this rubber disc, just the hint of that horizon. If I did manage to go over the edge of the dolphin, it would actually make it a little bit dull on those edges. And then you would just run over the edge again with the, a diamond. I really should have done that right at the beginning when I was doing my little horizon. I should have done it with the pen first to ensure that it was correct. It's the way I paint actually. Um, normally I would complete the background before I do any foreground. Or something like this, you want that water behind the animal. So 
So now really I am just nitpicking, <laughs> finding little areas that could have a little additional shading. Back to the white alcantus. So there you have it. There's our little dolphin peeping out of the water saying hello. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good one. See you soon. Bye for now.